Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to the Main Object Big Book Study of Alcoholics Anonymous. I am an alcoholic. My name is David. Hello. It's um, beyond a blessing to be here with you this morning. And um, why don't we start things off um, on a good foot with having our um, friend uh, Anthony read the AA preamble. And if you excuse me, let's see. There we go. Yeah, good morning, family. My name is Anthony and I'm alcoholic. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship. Oh, this is the AA preamble. Alcoholics Anonymous is a fellowship of people who share their experience, strength, and hope with each other that they may solve their common problem and help others to recover from alcoholism. The only requirement for membership is a desire to stop drinking. There are no dues or fees for AA membership. We are self supporting through our own contribution. A is not allied with any sect, denomination, politics, organization, or institution. Does not wish to engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any causes. Our primary purpose is to stay sober and to help other alcoholics achieve sobriety. Thank you, David. Thank you, Anthony. And now um, I'll ask everybody to uh, join with me as we... Um, so we have a moment of silence for the still sick and suffering alcoholic, followed by the uh, serenity prayer. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Um, I think everybody knows this, but just in case you don't, we are a line by line step book, or excuse me, step book, <laughs> big book meeting. And um, so, what we are doing is we, we go very slowly through the text. The um, What I found is that by doing that, it really opens up the text in a way that um, creates a powerful, for me, um, it, anyway, it's created a powerful relationship with the text that I never had before, even after many decades of sobriety. And it, what it also did was it really helped me uh, begin to experience the um, what it talks about and why we're called the main object um, big book study, and, and that is that the main object of the book is to help us find a higher power who can solve our problem. And I really find that um, when we go slowly through the book and look at what Bill meant when he was writing it, or the first 100, what they meant when they were writing it, um, it really just opens that up and makes it so much more accessible. One of the things that we do, is, and everybody probably knows, is we categorize the text into uh, five categories, which we um, use highlighters on in order to just reference it um, a bit more quickly. And so that's questions uh, and, uh, in orange, uh, directions and explanations in green, promises in blue, warnings in pink, and then history, we just leave uh, unhighlighted. And uh, I believe our friend Rich was so kind as to post that information in the, the chat as well. So that's there. And um, so the format is uh, we will go through uh, about a page or so of the text today. We're going to be beginning on page 62 at the bottom, um, really, uh, getting to the conclusion of uh, Bill's discussion about step three. And then what we're going to do from there is uh, um, move uh, right right uh, just before we um, start the inventory or the discussion of the inventory process. Um, and the format is I'll, I'll talk about the text until about... Um, for us, the top of the hour, seven o'clock on the East Coast here. And then I'll open the meeting up for um, discussion, questions, because um, I, I really want this, I, re I want to hear what you have to say and uh, get your feedback and uh, your perspective on this. Um, in addition, uh, most people know this, but just FYI, the um, 
we keep an archive of these meetings in case you miss any or you want to catch up or re-listen or what what have you and um, which means that the meetings are recorded the only the audio and only until um, I'm finished my part um, just to uh, be as tight with the uh, traditions as possible and follow that. So with that stated, um, again, let's let's jump to uh, page 62. We're near the bottom. Now, just FYI, if you were here last week, you remember we finished up with Bill talking about um, self-will run riot. And there were a lot of warnings there. And the fact that uh, many of us had moral and uh, philosophical convictions galore, but we could not live up to them. And then he concludes that section with, we had to have God's help. So he's put it out there that this is, at least where we are at now, is about really bringing on board God's help for us. And so we begin our today's reading with Bill saying, so this is the how and the why of it, and what he means, the how and the why of receiving that help from God. And, um, and it starts, so I just have that, you could put it as direction, I just have it blank. I mean, it really is just an intro sentence. But the next sentence I have as a warning, the next two sentences. First of all, we had to quit playing God. It did not work. It didn't work. I don't know about anybody else, but um, those two sentences are, um, they're sentences that I read at first and for years, I read them and I'm like, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. We, we had to quit playing God. So all that stuff that I did and all that stuff that I thought um, when I was drinking, um, that has to go out with the old, in with the new. Uh, and then over time, I discovered that, hold on, <laughs> David, even a lot of how you approach AA and how you act in AA you need to apply that there too and quit playing God with your AA life. And my point is that two sentences that I took, not, not as throwaways, but just as, you know, sort of obvious. What I found for me is that they became uh, very uh, deep and meaningful warnings that go layer by layer by layer through my, not just my drinking experience, but my recovery experience. So that is a key warning there. As a matter of fact, you could almost summarize, I don't want to oversimplify, but you could almost summarize the entire AA program um, with those two sentences. Um, and then a bit of direction. So next, so, so, okay, we get it. We're on board. We have to quit playing God. Um, so next we decided that hereafter in this drama of life. Now there is that first, just, I'd like to point out, there is that first, um, um, real bit of direction that um, we decided. So there's a decision going on here. We decided that hereafter in this drama of life, God was going to be our director. He is our principal. We are his agents as, as Robbie flashes his badge. And um, so what that means is um, the principle, if, if those, there you go. Thank you, Robbie. Um, for those of you that um, don't know, um, 
he doesn't mean school principal, although the 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 underlying idea is similar. Um, it's it's more from business, where you have a principal or the um, the lead person or the main person or the person at the top of the food chain, and then you have agents, and what agents are is um, not secret agents, um, but uh, agents are. Um, like, like representatives, um, they act and follow the direction of the principal and they act on the principal's behalf. They do the principal's work out in the field. So when you think of, for instance, the prayer of St. Francis, God, let me be an instrument of your peace. What we are really doing in that prayer in one sense is we are affirming that God is the principal and we are his agents or instruments. So we're making a decision that we are really going to reorient what we consider our role in life to be and our purpose in life. So he is the principal, we are his agents, he is the father, we are his children. And that's all direction or explanation. And of course there, Bill puts it at first in a business context and then in a Christian context. Um, and now we have a, um, the, the next two and a half lines, uh, our uh, re uh, promise, reward. Most good ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of a new and triumphant arch through which we passed to freedom. I want to, we don't have a lot of um, definitions today, but we do have one and I actually even have an illustration I want to show you, um, if you'll bear with me. There we go. That's in the chat now. Um, there is a, a keystone is the central stone of an archway. And here we have one of the several important, uh, uh, mason, uh, excuse me, masonry uh, metaphors that say that like five times fast, masonry metaphors that Bill uses in the text. And I just want to share with you, just in case you're, okay, uh, Keystone, where's that? And here we go. And you can see there, and that's an archway, or you can see it in a bridge, or as I was looking it up, I saw in a lot in a, uh, a lot of cases in um, traditional or older um, masonry work, um, they even have this as a special color, or they'll have this as um, a decorative figure, like an angel or a lion or something like that. But it's it's not just oh that's that's in the middle position that. Um, you know, so we're going to, you know, make it special. It's not just ceremonial or symbolic. It is, um, when you think about it, all of those stones in an archway, all of these here, whoops, you know, all of this and all of this is leaning inward. And what the keystone does, the keystone stabilizes the placement and weight of all the other stones. So that if you, if something happened, if the cement or mortar or what have you was loose here, and this somehow came loose, what would happen is over time, the entire structure would fall in on itself. And so, what Bill is saying, in effect, and I think that Bill really means the keystone in its most 
literal sense in that this is the centerpiece that holds all the weight from which everything else finds its stability and the source of its energy is in that keystone. So most good ideas are simple. And this concept was the keystone of a new and triumphant arch through which we pass to freedom. And there, another metaphor, when you think of um, military victories or celebrations, what do they do? Like in Paris and so forth, the uh, Arc de Triomphe, um, where after they won the war, the troops passed through the uh, Arc de Triomphe, Arch of Triumph. And so then over to page 63, this next, uh, the paragraph that begins, when we sincerely took, that entire paragraph is a promise. And what we have here, you could label this if you'd like, these are the step three promises. I'm sure most of you know this, but just in case, um, for a long time, I was a bit confused because um, people would say, okay, we're, we're going to talk about the promises at this meeting. Can, can, and at this meeting, we read the promises. And then they would read um, typically the step nine promises. And it was, but then I'd see promises, the word promises or things that seemed like promises throughout the book. And it wasn't until um, we AAs got Zoomified and I started listening to different commentators and different AA speakers that it was really affirmed for me, no, every step has promises attached to it. And if you look, and, and I think one of the things I've been really... Uh, focused on pointing out is as we go through each step in the big book that I point out, okay, these are the step one promises. These are step two promises. And now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, for this paragraph right here, what we have are the step three promises. And when we sincerely took such a position, all sorts of remarkable things followed. We had a new employer. Being all powerful. And notice, I just notice employer is capitalized. So he doesn't mean the person who signs our paycheck or what have you. What he means is a higher power. So we can think of him as a new employer. Um, being all powerful powerful. He provided what we needed. If we kept close to him and performed his work well. I'm going to say also that that, that um, those several sentences there were ones as well that I read for years and just like, okay, I get it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know, and, and if you would have asked me, David, do you understand those sentences? Yes. Do you agree with them? Yes. Do you abide by them? Yes. Um, and, uh, it was only after, um, uh, how, how, what was my barometer? Um, hardship, struggle, um, some depression, and what I realized is that I had deeper, re I had reservations that were so deep, I could barely put words to them. But I needed to do it, and I needed to work with a sponsor in order to do it. And why is that? Because I believed all those things, but I was not experiencing 
he provided what we needed if we kept close to him and performed his work well. And so as a result, I developed this AA program that was predicated on, well, God will keep me sober, but all these other areas, I've got to handle that. I've got to be in charge of that. And what I realized is that when I worked through my deepest of reservations and my deepest of character defects, this started to become true for me in a way that I could not have imagined before. Established on such a footing, we became less and less interested in ourselves, our little plans and designs. More and more, we became interested in seeing what we could contribute to life. So what Bill is saying there is that by engaging in this process of surrendering and becoming his agent and removing the blockages and the barriers and the bafflements to that process. One of the results after the fact is that selfishness leaves. So, and I guess what I'm, it's not, it's not just, oh, the fact that, oh, selfishness leaves. What's key for me there is that that self-centeredness is more powerful than my ability to will it away. It has to be removed through divine intervention. As we felt new power, and I'm emphasizing the word new, but new power flow in, we enjoyed peace of mind as we discovered we could face life successfully as we became conscious of his presence we began to lose our fear of today, tomorrow, or the hereafter. What Bill is saying there, quite frankly, and I've known people, unfortunately, who have experienced this even um, as they were um, nearing the end of their life, what he means there, or the hereafter, he's talking about the fear that our actions are, or if you will, our sins are going to result in us going to hell or being punished for them. So we were reborn. So he's really talking about a regeneration. And okay, so now, so those are the step three promises. And now, so he sort of, he's put the gold ring out there for us. And now what do we have? We have direction. And we have spe what I would consider today, especially to be special direction. We were now at step three. Many of us said to our maker as we understood him. Now here I'm going to hit the pause button. And I'm going to, um, no pressure, um, but um, I just want to offer an opportunity. Um, if you're not into it, that's fine. Please don't feel. You can even, you can turn your camera off or whatever. But for those who'd like to join me, I'm going to get on my knees now and recite the third step prayer. And I invite anybody here who would like to join me to do so. And I'm going to go a little slowly with it as so we can really think about the words and the meaning behind the words, which is more the meaning behind the words and our intention is what's most important. God, I offer myself to thee to build with me and to do with me 
as thou wilt. Relieve me of the bondage of self, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties, that victory over them may bear witness to those I would help of thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. And with that, thank you, everybody. Thank you for those who joined me and for those who, um, for whatever reason, uh, chose to not take part. Thank you for uh, indulging uh, all of us. And um, there are a couple things there. I believe, and this is just my own, this is not um, in the literature, not in, but I really, in my experience, step three and the step three prayer are, well, obviously it's all integrated. All 12 steps are integrated. Um, but it's really for me the beginning of a two-part process that then uh, really uh, takes flight with the step seven prayer and the step seven process. And it's a, uh, and especially because um, for a long time, I was confused because the third step prayer and the seventh step prayer for, for me seemed to be saying the same thing. At least I thought. And it took a while of in prayer and uh, seeking counsel from others and really seeing the subtle differences there and coming to see for myself how there's a process that I'm introducing or beginning with the step three prayer and the step three process that I really, it's not so much I bring to a conclusion, but I take to a deeper, um, more, I don't want to say permanent, but more sustainable level um, with step seven. So, but moving on, we're, we're at step three right now. And um, we thought well before taking this step, making sure we were ready that we could at last abandon ourselves utterly to him. So, of course, what does that mean? That means we work through and we iron out whatever reservations we can. We found it very, and this is um, the probably the uh, two-thirds of this paragraph, I'll, I'll let you know, is um, direction. We found it very desirable to take this spiritual step with an understanding person such as a, our wife, best friend, or spiritual advisor. That, of course, is direction, as is the next sentence. But it is better to meet God alone than with one who might misunderstand. And that's pretty self-evident. Um, this next sentence is uh, direction as well. The wording was, of course, quite optional so long as we expressed the idea, and the key point there, voicing it without reservation. So the idea is to really identify through the first and second step processes any barriers we might have about surrendering our lives and our wills to God. And removing those barriers in order to move forward. And then um, the next sentence that concludes the paragraph is a promise. This was only a beginning, though if honestly and humbly made, an effect, sometimes a very great one, was felt at once. And um, so obviously we have a promise there. 
And um, there are some people I know, I've heard stories of people who have felt um, a dramatic sense of freedom and regeneration after step three. Um, I will tell you that I did not um, because I had a lot of work in steps uh, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine to do uh, in order to come to freedom. Donna, yes, please. I'm sorry. Thank you, David. Uh, just a quick question. The third step prayer and the sentence after we thought, well, what did you highlight that as? That's all direction. Direction. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Tim. Yeah, a Tim Alcoholic. I just want to make sure this is this is the sharing part of the meeting, right? Now we're gonna. Um, well, you know, it's all flexible here, but um, we'll get to that. Oh, just, perfect, I'm perfect. Just finishing perfect. up. Um, okay, so direction. Next, we launched out on a course of vigorous action. The first step of which is a personal house cleaning. Okay. And then, so that's direction, those two lines, but then we flip over and as we finish up the text today, the rest um, of this, except for the last sentence, is all warning, which many of us never attempted. Though our decision was a vital and crucial step, it could have little permanent effect unless at once followed by a strenuous effort to face and be rid of the things in ourselves which had been blocking us. Our liquor was but a symptom. We could spend a whole meeting just on those several sentences there, those several warnings. Um, but what I will say is what really got driven home from me uh, much later in sobriety was that for me, step three was really a decision to Im get immediately to work on the remainder of the steps rather than just surrendering to um, this uh, divine notion of a higher power that I was formulating. Um, and then direction, so we had to get down to causes and conditions. So we've covered a lot of ground there, and I'm going to um, end there. I went a little over four minutes, so um, thanks for your indulgence. But I want to open it up now for um, and invite your comments.